cut. That's a wrap for today. It's Madeline with Blue Stocking, and today we're going to talk about the dual life of an iconic Hollywood star and incredible inventor, Hedy Lamarr. You may have heard of Hedy thanks to her glamorous roles in classic movies of the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, such as Samson and Delilah and Dishonored Lady. But Hedy wasn't just the most beautiful woman in the world, she was also a brilliant inventor. Hedy was born as Heidvig Kiesler on November 9, 1914 in Vienna, Austria, though everyone called her Hedy. From a young age, Hedy's favorite activities were playing make-believe and taking things apart to see how they worked. As a teen, she interviewed to become a script girl at a filming studio in Vienna, which landed her the first of several small parts in Austrian movies. Several years after her screen debut, Hedy got her big break. She was offered the lead role in the Czech film Ecstasy. Thrilled about the opportunity, Hetty took the part, despite its requirement for a risque appearance. The film was a big success, making Hetty a celebrity overnight. Soon, she attracted the attention of wealthy Austrian weapons manufacturer Fritz Mandel, who convinced her to marry him. Though Hetty may have fallen in love with Fritz, she quickly realized that his domineering behavior made her miserable. Fritz forbade her from appearing in another film, had her followed, spied on her friends, and forced her to appear as his trophy wife at dinner parties and events. Hetty realized that she'd never be happy with Fritz controlling her life, so she packed her bags full of jewelry she could easily sell and escaped to England. In London, she was introduced to MGM CEO Louis B. Mayer, who soon offered her a standard contract for six months at MGM for $125 a week. Hetty, with her characteristic confidence, flatly rejected the offer, believing that she deserved a longer contract with higher weekly pay. But when Louis didn't send her a counteroffer, Hetty sought to convince him of her star potential. So she purchased a ticket to America on the same boat that Lewis and his wife were traveling on. During the trip, Hetty befriended Lewis's wife and mesmerized all the young men on board, which convinced Lewis to grant her a seven-year contract with MGM at $500 a week. This new contract lasted for 14 times longer and paid four times more money, plus it came with English lessons and a new marquee-ready last name, Lamar. Though English was always a struggle for her, Hetty hit the ground running in Hollywood. And just seven months after her arrival, she was cast in her first American film, Algiers. Despite her successful Hollywood career, Hetty's inventive side soon grew restless, and she began tinkering with household gadgets. Meanwhile, World War II had begun, and Hetty was devastated by its impact on the citizens of Austria, her home country. Reading the news about the war, Hetty noticed a pattern. U.S. torpedoes almost always missed their targets when aiming at Nazi submarines because the radio signal the torpedoes and their remote controls used to communicate was easy for the Nazis to jam. As Hetty pondered this issue, she attended a dinner party where she met George Antile, a revolutionary music composer whose most famous work involves 16 player pianos playing the same melody simultaneously. Inspired by George's synchronized player pianos, Hetty theorized that if the torpedo and remote control could both hop to another radio frequency at the exact same moment, the signal would be constantly changing and therefore impossible to jam. Hetty quickly got George on board and together they began working on developing her new frequency hopping technology. A few months later, they patented the technology and offered it to the US Army, who didn't fully understand the concept. Instead of using her technology, they suggested that Hetty refocused her efforts on entertaining US troops and promoting the sale of war bonds. Reluctantly, Hetty agreed and embarked on several patriotic efforts, 
which collectively raised $25 million, the equivalent of over $4 billion today. About 20 years later, in the midst of the 1960s Cuban Missile Crisis, the Army finally realized the value of Hetty's invention and began using the technology to improve their radar systems. Her idea eventually fueled even more technological advances, including the GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi that we use today. Hetty's contributions went largely unacknowledged until 1997, when the Electronic Frontier Foundation finally recognized her impact on modern technology and presented her with the Pioneer Award. Throughout her life, Hetty continued to innovate, creating many interesting technologies most notably a new design for traffic lights, which is still used today. Hetty deeply wanted to see the new millennium, and like almost everything else she set out to do, she accomplished just that. She enjoyed 19 days of living in the 21st century before she peacefully passed away in her sleep on January 19, 2000, at the age of 86. Today, Hetty is remembered not only as a gorgeous and talented actress with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but also as a brilliant innovator and inductee into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, who contributed to some of the most important technologies of the 21st century. And in a fitting tribute, several countries, including her native Austria, celebrate a holiday known as Inventors Day every year on November 9th, her birthday. Well, that's all for now, friends. Remember to feed your mind.